Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. The gentleman is recognized for as much time as he may consume. Mr. Speaker, as we talk about the Affordable Care Act, I think it's important to remind ourselves of the situation before it passed. Costs were going through the roof. Those with pre-existing conditions could not get insurance. Women were paying more than men, and every year millions of people were losing their insurance. Passed the Affordable Care Act, and since then, the costs have continued to go up, but at the lowest rate in 50 years. Those with pre-existing conditions can now get insurance at the standard rate. Women are no longer paying more than men, and instead of millions of people losing their insurance every year, more than 20 million more people now have insurance. Now, the full name of the Affordable Care Act is a Patient Protection and Affordable Care Act, so now your coverage can't be canceled if your insurance company decides that it's paid too much. Preventive services such as cancer screenings are free with no copays and deductibles. We're closing the donut hole. Those under 26 can stay on their parents' policies. We funded community health centers, made investments in education to produce more doctors, nurses, and other professionals. And through all of that, the Medicare Trust Fund is more solvent than it was before. Still, the law is not perfect. But if we're going to make any changes, we ought to improve the law, not make it worse. Incredibly, this bill makes it worse. And now the, CB the CBO has separated promises and press releases from reality. 24 million fewer people will have insurance, and our Republicans call this choice and freedom to be uninsured. Most everybody else will pay more and get, uh, get fewer benefits. All of those consequences will occur if the proposal actually works. A number of states have done what this bill tries to do, and that is cover people with pre-existing conditions without universal coverage. All of, those, all of those attempts failed. And so the question we must ask is, who will be better off if this bill passes? Certainly not older people who will, pay, who will face the bill's age tax. Certainly not veterans who will lose benefits. Certainly not senior citizens in nursing homes and people with disabilities because Medicaid is cut. Even the solvency of the Medicare trust fund will be worse, but millionaires will get tax cuts. Mr. Speaker, we've been hearing a lot of complaints and shortcomings about the Affordable Act, but if we're going to make any changes, we should improve it. Unfortunately, this bill makes things worse. 24 million will lose their insurance. Most everybody else will pay more and get less. This bill should be defeated. I reserve the balance of my time. Jeff